Today, we're gonna to make perfectly granular brown rice in the Nutmeg Notebook Kitchen. What's different about this rice from the many other recipes out there is that it dispenses very easily into your soup, onto your salad, or any other dish you may be preparing. Hi, my name's Tom from Nutmeg Notebook, and today we're gonna to be making brown rice, which is one of our staple foods. And as I mentioned, it is, is a batch cooking process. I'm gonna be making eight cups of brown rice. We do get our rice from Costco in these 15 pound bags. The brand they're currently carrying is the Homai brand. I may not be pronouncing that correctly. The important thing that it's organic. We do rinse it and so forth, and we do buy rice that is typically grown in California because we know that the rice grown in California has a minimum of contaminants in it compared to some other parts of the country. So we do have a bag already open and we use clips to shut these when we're not dispensing from them. And I have a little kitchen hack for you. The bag is, you know, past halfway empty. And when you're scooping in there with a the little scoop and you've got a lot of bag, it can catch it and you can have rice flying everywhere. So as I use the bag, I actually trim down the bag so it's not as deep, just to make it easier to scoop in and out of. So my recipe for brown rice in a six quart pressure cooker, I'm using the Instapot today, is to start out with eight cups, eight measured cups of rice. And this is a full one cup. We have a number of pressure cookers and they, some of them were coming with these three quarter cups. And I'm not using that, I am talking about a full cup of rice. So, so I just scoop that in. Two, seven, eight. Okay, so eight cups of brown rice, easy enough. The ratio that we are using for brown rice in the pressure cooker is one to one. One cup of rice, one cup of water. So I have measured out eight cups of water here. I typically just do that at the sink, but, but we're gonna go ahead and, and put in the eight cups of water. As I was mentioning, the one-to-one -one ratio is what's important to get that perfect granular texture in the rice. And the one-to-one -one ratio is how you achieve that, but we're going to rinse the rice. And so then that makes measuring the water into rinsed wet rice is then a whole nother set of mathematics, which I prefer not to do. So I've learned a, a little hack here. In, in the measuring pot, you can see here on this camera that I have the water, I put in the eight cups of rice and I put in the eight cups of water, and you can see it comes right to the three liter line. Underneath the four L there is the three. And I just made a mental note of that because we're gonna be using that later after we rinse. So now we're gonna go ahead and go to the sink and rinse the rice. Okay, so here we're at the sink, and although the rice is pretty clean uh, coming out of the bag from this particular brand, I do prefer to run some clear water on it, and then I just give it a good stir with a nice sized spatula. And you see I got a little bit of foaming on here, and that, that reduces as you rinse the rice. We just dump out the excess water and it's getting all of the milling dust and so forth out of the rice as well. And then we rinse again. I'll usually do this three times or so. Okay, that's it for rinsing. And we're gonna pour out the water. So after my final rinse, you can see that I have the water level filled back right to that three liter mark, which was just my benchmark to see what the water level wants to be to equal that one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, coming back from the sink, I've got a little bit of a water mess, and so I always do dry off the pot before I go into the pressure cooker with it, and we'll get it started. Another benefit of rinsing the rice is it minimizes the amount of cooking, I got cooking foam you get at the top of the pressure cooker. First couple of times I didn't do that, and when I opened the lid there was all kinds of debris on the underside of the pressure cooker lid because I presumed that while it was cooking up in there, it was foaming. So now we're ready to put the lid on and get the pressure cooker started. And I do use manual for this. Different brands of pressure cookers, different sizes of pressure cookers. 
I don't know what they pre-programmed into the rice setting exactly. I do know that I can manage the time and the pressure level and the sealing of the valve. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do this on manual and I want to do it for 15 minutes. So I need to bring that down and back up. And I'm going to set the valve to sealing. So in just a moment, this will beep to let us know that it's on its way. And when it's done, it'll time out. And I do go off and do other things while that's happening. And it's usually a good 15 or 20 minutes or so before I actually come back. Sometimes the little button has dropped because it's done a complete natural release. If it's 20 minutes or more, I go ahead and release whatever pressure is left and then we'll be dispensing it into our containers for freezing, which we'll be talking about more in just a bit. Okay, we're back. The pressure cooker went is 15 minutes and then we took time for lunch. And so it probably was another 25 minutes uh, uh, by the time we came back down. So we're ready to open it up and put it into our storage containers. Use my Instant Pot mitts. And we're going to dispense this uh, into the little container, like I showed you at the very beginning of the video, because these are four cups and I typically do a one cup serving and you can kind of visually uh, measure a, a fourth of the container out into whatever soup or bowl that you're making. So um, I like to give the rice just a little bit of a fluff with a good heavy duty. I use this wooden rice paddle that we get from Holland Bowl Mill because it doesn't bend and flex on me like the little plastic ones that come with the pressure cookers. So we're going to dispense up these. I'm going to just do a couple of them for the video today to show you how I measure them out. You see how the rice is nice and fluffy. You just kind of level it off. And there's one. And we'll do another one. So I will fill this entire pot of rice into six of these four cup containers. Uh, it works out that it, it just holds all that I cook. And then those get stacked up and put into the freezer. So I do let them cool a little bit uh, on the counter. So I'm not putting like really hot rice into the freezer. And then I stack them up about four high and then this goes into the freezer. And what comes out then the next day once they've frozen up, and this is one uh, from my last batch, and I have already taken a serving out of this, but it dispenses onto my chopped salad or whatever I, I want to put it in. Very nice, very nice and easy. This gives you almost a an al dente mouthfeel, a nutty mouthfeel, a chewy mouthfeel. So you get you get to, you feel really, get to really feel like you're getting to eat something when you have the granular, nutty al dente rice. So there you go, you have batch prepping rice. How to work smarter and not harder in the kitchen. So I'll get the rest of these dispensed out and frozen up, and then we will be set for the week. Thank you for watching our video today. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you'll get notifications when we do future uploads. I'm Tom and I help you get healthy and stay healthy one meal at a time. Bye-bye.